Hello, I'm Nina and welcome to NV Fine Art Studio. Today I want to show you a few ways of painting grass on a beach. In watercolor we usually start painting from light to dark. The tricky part of painting the grass on a beach is it's usually warm in tones and it's lighter than the surroundings. So, how to paint something that is light on top of something that is dark, but without using white opaque color, and something that is warm on top of something that is cool. Spoiler alert, it's all about the first wash. Let's start. Here I'm going to demonstrate three options. Option one, painting first wash starting from the grass. Second option, painting first wash starting from the sea. And third one, not doing warm underwash for the grass at all. In the first sample, we are going to start with warm wash for the sand and the grass. For the sand, I'm using a mix of raw sienna, alizarin, crimson and lavender. It is a very quick tea consistency mixture. For the grass, I'm adding a bit of golden okra to the mix. The sand and the sea are usually the lightest value shapes. We do not need to be specific about painting each individual grasses. It is just the underwash, the lightest light that you can see. Next, we proceed to the sky and the sea. For the sky, I'm using cobalt, lavender and neutral tint. For the sea, I'm also adding cerulean and turquoise. The important part here is to connect the sky and the sea shapes to the grass shape without leaving a hard edge in between them. If I was painting something larger than this one third of the quarter sheet, I definitely pre wetted the paper to make sure my warm wash for the grass doesn't dry out while I'm painting the sea. When the first wash is dry, I proceed to the middle value wash. For the grass, I'm using the same colors but making a thicker, milky consistency mix. Again, I'm not painting individual grasses, just the shape. While it's still wet, I'm adding a slightly darker but same consistency mix of neutral tint and burnt sienna to the shadow parts. Then mix a cooler mix of ultramarine and neutral tint and connect the grass to its shadow. This is to make sure that all the middle value shapes are connected and there are no hard edges in between. I'm changing my brush to the smaller and mixing thicker and darker mix and adding a few darker shadows wet into wet. I'll let it dry for a few minutes and while it's still damp, I scratch a few highlights for the individual grasses. I'll let it dry again and proceed to my third wash, darkest darks. Just remember, do not overdo your darks. They are there to enhance the light and not to get rid of it. Dear friends, I have an announcement to make. I have launched my Patreon page. I'm focusing on two main aspects, being creative and improving your skills. So the first year is called Creative Watercolor. We will imagine, experiment and have fun there. I will be posting a full-time lessons for this tier every second week. If in addition to being creative, you wish to work on improving your skills, then the second tier masterclass community is the way to go. The biggest difference from the first one is it offers access to two libraries, creative and masterclass, and access to community forum, where you will be able to post your attempts and questions and receive instructions from me on where and how to improve. I also have an art collector tier for patrons who in addition to learning wish to receive one of my paintings. It will be a large piece of art over a quarter watercolor sheet and it will be one of the recent works. I will post it to you at my expense no matter where you are after 12 months of support. Thank you friends and I hope to see you there. Now let's see what happens if we start our painting process with the sky and sea. This is the second option, 
So, I start with the sky. I'm using a mix of cobalt and lavender, very watery mix, almost water. Then I add a bit of lavender and neutral tint for the middle part of the sky. And add a touch of ultramarine to the mix for the lower part of the sky. For the sea I'm using ultramarine for the dark part and a mix of cerulean and cobalt turquoise for the lighter parts. As soon as it's done, I proceed to the sand and the grass. I am premixing a very watery wash of raw sienna. It is a thick consistency and I'm painting it over the damp surface of the sky. It instantly blooms. This is what I want to see. It is a good trick to use on purpose, as it creates a very nice and unpredictable edge. I'm using my spatula to scrub the grass. Unfortunately, I'm a bit too late with the scrubbing as the surface is a bit too dry, but if it wasn't, it would add more prominent spikes to the shape. Then I follow pretty much the same steps. My second wash starts with a warm light mix of raw sienna and burnt sienna. I follow with slightly darker mix of burnt sienna, neutral tint, and for the shadow I use classy burnt sienna, ultramarine and alizarin. When the second wash dries to the damp state, I scratch out some highlights with my spatula. And the last step is to add darkest darks for the ultimate sense of space. I am adding a few shadows, as I felt like this example needed slightly darker darks to complement the much lighter first layer created by the blooms that we can still see under all these middle and dark values. Now let's not paint any underwash for the grass and see if it's better or worse, and is doing the underpaint even worse the hustle. My first step is exactly the same as in the second example. I do a gradient wash for the sky and then slightly darker line for the horizon. Next a cobalt turquoise wash with some skipped whites of the paper for the ripples in the sea. I finish this wash with a warm light mix for the sand. While it's still damp I do a few scratch outs. Unfortunately the sky is already dry so I could not do the scratches on the sky part. A tip, if you want to practice this, make sure you pre-wet the back of the paper, it will keep the paper damp for longer. Just a few extra minutes will make all the difference. If I did this, the paper still would be at the ultimate state to do the scratch outs. But it's ok for now. I will use white gouache to add a few highlights here and there later on. I follow with the middle value wash of a light warm mix and add a few shadow parts with a darker cooler mix. I make sure to connect it with the shadow. While this wash is still damp, I add the thicker and darker paint to create a sense of depth in the grass. Now I grab white gouache straight out of the tube and paint a few highlights. This is only because I was too late with the scratch outs. Now I grab a few different brushes to vary my strokes to paint individual grasses. This is actually very time consuming and took me two times longer than to paint the entire first sample painting. Also in my opinion it doesn't look as loose and fresh as the first option. I definitely prefer the looser style of painting. Here you have it, three different ways of painting grass on a beach. If we compare these results, I think the first one is definitely full of atmosphere. I feel like I can smell the sea and the air. 
The second one has a very nice glow to it. The bloom would look much more purposeful if I succeeded with the scratches. Please remember to pre-wet the back of the paper if you plan to do the scratches on your first wash. The third one is beautiful, very fine and delicate, but doesn't have the glow in comparison to the first and second one, and is also a bit too tight for my liking. Please leave a comment below which one is your favorite and why. I'd be very interested to know your opinion. This week I will be making a full painting using one of these techniques. If you are interested to paint along, please come and find it on my Patreon, Creative Watercolor Tier. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If so, please like and subscribe and I will see you in my next video.